So I don't know if this is something that anybody actually wonders besides me, uh, but if, if you have wondered this, then this is your answer. When I say make the font size bigger, when I say something like for for i equals zero, i is less than, let's say 10, i plus uh, plus, we can do something with i such as draw text. And this is just going to draw all the numbers between zero and nine, as you can see. What exactly is i plus plus? I will make the font size a little bigger still because I'm not going to be writing a ton of code here. And uh, it is a, a small uh, set of only three characters. So on the surface, it's pretty simple. It's just a shorthand for something like i plus plus equals one. Uh, there's also minus minus, which is ostensibly the shorthand for i minus equals one. You can see if I change it to plus equals one, it does the same thing. Um, if you want to go the really long way, which for reasons unknown, I used to do, you could uh, you could say i equals i plus one, which is again, the, uh, the exact same thing. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. So i plus plus is an, in a, uh, an example of what is known as the postfix increment operator. Uh, this is an operator in very much the same way that the, uh, the equal sign is an operator. It's a statement that stands on its own. Um, as opposed to something like i plus one, which is not a statement that stands on its own. And if you try and use that in the in the update section of a for loop, it will complain and inform you that unnecessary expression i uses a statement, and uh, and not let you do that. And you can use this for anything. Um, it is not uncommon to see i plus plus, or n plus plus, or perhaps something like index plus plus used. Um, in any place that would otherwise demand a plus equals one. Um, same for minus minus. Uh, in place of in place of using minus equals one. But as I've been implying for this entire video now, uh, it's a little bit more interesting than that. So if I were to remove the the increment from the for loop up here, which you are allowed to do in, in GML now. For a long time, I don't think you were allowed to do this. Uh, and if you were to do something else. One, if you were to do nothing, this would be an infinite loop and the program would break. Uh, nothing's going to happen. I don't even think the game window is going to appear. Yep, we're stuck in an infinite loop. That's not going to work. Uh, again, as I was saying, you could do it down here. You could do it anywhere. It doesn't have to be as part of a loop. I'm going to spend a lot of time waiting for the game to, waiting for the game to build in this video, I think because I'm not doing anything super complicated. You could also use it inside another another uh, expression. So you could say string of i++. What do you think this is going to do? So this is where it starts to get interesting because we are no longer using i as, um, we are no longer just having the expression stand on its own. We're using it as part of another expression, which leaves the question of when exactly does the increment happen? So something else that you may have seen, although it's far less common, is something like plus plus i. So if you remember, if you remember from when I ran the, ran the game 10 seconds ago, uh, the numbers were 0 through 9. And if I were to say plus plus i instead, you might expect it to be the exact same thing, but it is in fact not. So this is almost universal in programming languages. In fact, I the only reason I say it's almost universal is because I don't like to speak in absolutes. I can't think of any programming languages where this is not the case. So what I'm getting at is that saying i++ and plus plus i is slightly different. Putting the increment operator or the decrement op operator after the, uh, the value that you are trying to increment or decrement will return the value and pass it on to whatever, whatever the other part of the program is and then perform the plus one or minus one. Putting the increment or decrement operator first, on the other hand, uh, does the opposite. It performs the action and then returns the value. So i++ when i is 0, when i contains the value 0, uh, it first passes the value 0 into the string. It returns the value first. And then uh, 0 plus plus equals i now contains the value 1. The second time through the loop, uh, i contains the value 1. You pass the value 1 to string. It, it draws that on the screen. and then increments the value, uh, whereas doing the opposite, 
I would contain the value zero, you add one, you return the value one to whatever other things the computer is trying to do, and I'm suddenly talking with my hands a lot. I don't normally do that. I don't know why I'm suddenly waving my hands on my computer screen. Um, second time around, I contains the value one, you add one, return it to the, uh, the string function, and so it goes. There are some places where you can, in fact, take advantage of this. Let's save our index equals zero, and maybe you want to fill an array. Uh, let's make it like four, size of four. Uh, you could say array of zero equals, uh, let's just make it some arbitrary numbers, 15. I like the number 15. Array of one equals, what other numbers do I like? I like, I like 64 for obvious reasons. Array index two equals, oh, pi. Pi is a nice number. Array index, oops, index three equals, is tau a keyword? No, it is not. Let's make the uh, the tau purists happy. So this is gonna populate an array with a couple of numbers. Uh, let us draw those out. Um, we will go back to using the I++ in the normal place, which is uh, the, uh, the update condition in the for loop. And let's just draw array of i. So that's cool. So it's going to contain some numbers. Um, these are hard-coded magic numbers, these array indices. If you decide that you want to, for example, change the order around, then suddenly everything is out of order. Uh, you need to update the, the, um, you need to update the indices yourself any, any, in any place where they might have gotten out of order. Uh, again, I'm suddenly waving my hands at my computer screen and I don't know why. If you were to ask my mom, she would probably say it's the 25% Italian in me or something like that because apparently that's a huge Italian stereotype or something. I don't know. Or going back to index and the, um, the increment operator, you could say, array of index plus plus equals whatever value you're going for. So now you can see 15 pi tau and 64. Uh, and if I suddenly want to change these around uh, to get 15 tau pi and 64, uh, I don't have to have it. one, I don't have to have any more magic numbers floating around and two, I don't have to actually update anything, uh, which is not the most useful trick in the book, admittedly, but it's something you can do, and I think it demonstrates the uh, the postfix increment operator fairly well. Uh, you could, on the other hand, uh, use the prefix increment operator. And again, this works for minus minus as well. I'm just, um, I, I, I feel like if anybody already understands uh, plus plus, they will also understand minus minus because it's the same thing by going in the other direction. You can see that uh, everything is shifted up by one because like I said before, uh, postfix increment returns the value, so it'll be index equals zero, array of index zero is equal to 15, uh, index plus equals one, so index is now one, and so on down the line. Um, and if I were to do prefix increment instead, index equals zero, plus plus index, so that's going to uh, make the value of index one, and then use it in the uh, as the array index, and um, and now instead of setting index one to 15, we're setting index, uh, sorry, instead of setting index zero to 15, we're setting index one to 15. Uh, this is just an interesting little bit of computer science. Like I said, this is, as far as I know, true in every language that supports plus plus and minus minus, uh, the increment and decrement operators. I don't know of any languages that are exceptions. This is not just a GML thing. You can use this pretty much wherever there's computer code. But if you've ever wondered about what exactly this is, uh, that's your answer. If you have a hard time rem remembering exactly what it does, I'd recommend not doing it for weird stuff like this. Phone, okay, you know what, fine. I'm going to take you and I'm going to, one, enter, enter my lock screen number correctly, and two, I'm going to push the power button and you're going to be turned off because I don't feel like, I don't feel like dealing with you going off constantly while I'm trying to record stuff. Uh, where was I? Yes, I know, you turned off. You don't have to make the noise to, to tell me that. I guess I could have just muted it, but you know what? I don't care. On the plus side, at least my phone is now going off because people are actually like sending me messages about things and and not like trying to scam me out of my money or whatever. Uh, as I was saying, if you don't have a, uh, if you don't remember what plus plus and minus minus and prefix and postfix means offhand, 
Um, I'd recommend not doing this because you could accidentally like do something you didn't intend to and create a hard to trace off by one error of some sort. That's up to you. Nevertheless, uh, I'm just giving you the information. It's up to you what you decide to do with it. I can teach you, but I won't be held responsible for what you do with the knowledge. My name is Michael the Wizard Dragon. I hope you enjoyed that. I try to post one or two of these videos a week, occasionally more. If you want the code, there's only like 10 lines of it. It's just what you see on the screen right here, but I will, um, I will have a link to the project in the description of the video all the same. Uh, I recently set up a Patreon for these videos, so if you want to contribute to, um, if you want to contribute in some way, shape, or form to me making them, that's also in the video description. Regardless, I hope you found that useful, or at least interesting, if not useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Indie Punch and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to try and pronounce them out loud, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun. I am the all-time worst salesman ever.